J Mass. Listen. 48 minutes a game. I got two of the top guys in the real estate business. I got two guys that got heat on doors. Logan, let's bring them up. <laughs> hey, what up, Jay? Yeah, let's go. What up? What up, T? How's it going? Hey, I, man, it's going great, man. I'm so glad to have Terry and Jay on for today's show. Today's show is about education, entrepreneurship, and real estate. Okay, now, Jay, we got to let the audience know who you are and what you do so that then we can begin to educate them. So tell us about you, Jay. Got it, got it. So, uh, okay, I Jay Mass, CEO of Cashflow Diary. We're out here in Southern California. What we do is very simple. It's cash flow. It's that money that comes in uh, that uh, you don't have to work for day to day. It's, you know, having more money come in to go out without working. It's effectively teaching you to retire by building, owning, controlling assets instead of using your labor for income. I've been I've had the privilege of doing this now for about a decade. And it's been fun helping others copy what we've done and now put it into their own lives so that they can go care about and do the things that they care about the most. And because ultimately that that's that's what gets me excited is when people get to stay close and live close to their values. That's amazing. So so you're telling me that I have an opportunity to learn from you and duplicate the system that you have in place to become successful in the real estate game. Well, one thousand percent. I mean, we tried the books, we tried the courses, we tried the videos. That wasn't enough. So we took it uh, an extra step and said, "Okay, well, how about I come alongside you, and as I continue to grow, you watch, and then you do, and then I critique, and then if necessary, <laughs> I get on the phone with you <laughs> until we get it done, because that's what it takes. It's a certain level of accountability. It's not just the information. It's not a lack of information. Believe me, there's a lot of it out there. But it's understanding things like sequence and timing and 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 persistence and review." resilience and being able to deal with everything that the marketplace is throwing at you. But yet at the same time, know that when it's time to push through, when it's time to pull back, and most importantly, knowing when you are at your limitations, how to go find the right person. Wow. 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 T. So Terry, we know how Jay gets down. Okay. We got to educate uh, the audience. So let's fire some questions at Jay. Oh, bring it. Oh, yeah, they can. If they got some too. This is going to be fun. So, Jay, how does one get started up in your in your course? Or like, how can I, you know, start learning from you right away? So the, the biggest thing to understand is that learning, it, it has a lot to do with the uh, word, the language. Wealth is a it's a language. It's its own, it has its own words. It has it, whose words have their own meaning. For example, if I say debt service, that means one thing to a banker. If I say mortgage, many of us might actually know what that is. And if I say um, a, <laughs> pay my car note, you know, it's the same thing. But I'm in essence, I'm talking. I can be talking about the same process as it relates to 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 money. The thing that matters is knowing that adding to your vocabulary, your financial IQ uh, consistently is by far the most important thing. I'll tell you what I did. I used to watch CNBC and every time I did not know what the word was, I wrote it down. And then I went to a site, Investopedia, and I looked it up. Mm. And yeah, it's a, it could be a 30 minute show that take you three hours to get through at the beginning. Jay, Jay you know that's <laughs> really hard. That's Jay, you know, that's really funny that you mentioned, you know, vocabulary and understanding terminology, right? I think terminology and language, it puts fear on, especially the African-American people and the black communities. And when you see things that you don't know, you know, you normally kind of like, if you don't embrace it, you go away from it. So that that's a really good thing that we can share with the audience. Audience, 
you, in, in order for you to understand what you're doing, you have to become familiar with the terminology. You have to become very familiar with vocabulary to so understand the language. Yeah. It's amazing. That's, that's where the secret sauce is. I mean, I, for a while, and I still, my wife and I will still do this. We teach, like, uh, one of the things we've had the privilege of doing is teaching people financial literacy through a board game. And there's some terms in there, like it, it says ROI. Well, that's not ROI, it's return on investment. And then it's like, okay, well, what is the definition of return on investment? Because most people don't know that cash in divided by cash received over 12 months is the technical definition of return on investment. And you'll find even in today's world, most people are saying return on investment, but what they're really talking about is either return on equity or internal rate of return. And when I just said those two extra words, somebody just said, what's that? And that, but it makes all the difference when you're trying to put capital or time or anything of that you value in the game, you need to understand what that word means and when that money is coming back or when that resource is coming back or how does it grow in order to have the correct expectation. Mm -hmm. True, true. Terry, what's your, what's your next one, Terry? So, Jay, I got to, you know, speak with you a little bit about real estate and uh, learn that, you know, you, you, you kind of, your niche is the short-term rental market. Uh, now, can you explain, like, why, why you kind of prefer a newbie to get into that market? Or, what, you know, what do you see that, that em emphasizes the short-term rental market? rather than going into regular single family residences or, you know, either, you know, other, other niches or what's up. Absolutely. Absolutely. One small correction. My niche is cash flow. I am <laughs> asset agnostic. I really don't I care like what the <laughs> asset is. If spoons had the same benefits, we'd be talking about spoons, but spoons don't have that benefit. Real estate is useful because it comes to uh, POC, proof of concept. Everybody, I don't have to convince anybody that people like looking at the roof over their head. That's not like revolutionary thought. Yes, yeah, someone is going right. to the product. Everything else requires proof of concept first, and that makes it uh, challenging. And real estate has more access to capital than any other modality business it just it just has man there's money for it all the time okay so that also takes away another potential burden when you're trying to just learn some basic business principles but specifically okay here we go when it comes to short-term rental i've had the privilege of doing hundreds of wholesale uh, uh transactions i've held hundreds of single family houses and over 400 doors and many mortgages. I've been the bank. I've, I've done a lot of things. And even cell phone towers and commercial real estate. It's a long way of saying that what you won't hear is long-term landlord is a thin, low margin business. Okay. And, say, say that again. One more time, Jay. What's that? Say that again. Yeah. Okay. So long term landlord is a thin, low margin business. There's mm. not a lot of room for mistakes, especially at the beginning when you're making this mortgage payment. And I, I'm just going to be very human with it for a moment. The first time you do something, are you any good? Uh, the answer is no, in case you were wondering. And you get better over time. So you increase your risk over time, right? Well, that's not what we do with real estate. We actually invert it. We say, hey, how about we make a 30-year commitment right now at the beginning when you know nothing, never hired a soul, doesn't under don't understand how to screen tenants, so please hire a property manager who you don't know how to vet and then hope it goes well. That, to me, makes no sense. Mm. Short-term mm. rental takes what is a 30-year commitment down to a minimum of 12, maybe 36. You could do a lease either line, uh, either link. That's fine. Your capital outlay is a fraction of the cost. And it has a higher return on investment from the beginning. Plus, you will learn mm. how to screen, manage, uh, control, and price your uh, product properly, serve the cut. You will learn everything you need to know without having to pay for the broken roof, the broken AC, and all the other stuff that comes along with property ownership. Mm. And you can take the, and I'm a big proponent of numbers and math and data. And when you do the math, the math will tell you what to do, right? So you can take that $100,000 that you were gonna go buy a piece of property with, 
you get one property. But if you take that same hundred thousand dollars and go in the short-term rental world, you'll probably have 10 locations. And if you understand anything about currency, monetary theory, and inflation, you understand that 10 units of production is a lot better than one. And what it ends up happening is that your return on investment is through the roof. I tell people all the time, would you rather just think about it? How long does it take for you to get your money back from a single family house? Like not without no refinancing, nothing fancy, just operate the house. How long is that going to take? Well, from just operating, I know short term rentals will get you your money back within 10 to 18 months. That's what I know. Okay. So you say 10, so 10 to 18 months. If I get a single family home and that becomes one of my rental properties, I can make my money back in about 10 to 18 months. Yes, but you have a short term rental. Right. right. Yes. Oh, so with the short term rental. Right. Like, like or Airbnb or VRBO. Yeah, Any those are. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Those are marketplaces. Though. There's a difference. It's kind of like Amazon, right? So Amazon is a place where buyers who make product, or sorry, sellers who make products, but place them for sale. And then people who are looking for those products come and they meet and Amazon takes a little piece. Mm -hmm. uh, your Airbnbs, your VRBOs, your flip key, Wimdu, for those of you overseas, booking.com, I, I can do that for a while because there's a lot of them. Um, those are just marketplaces. They're not the business model. Okay, so right. like, very clear distinction because there are so, there are sixty five different use cases for what we do. For example, we have <laughs> when um I think it was the Rams had their training camp near here in L.A. Uh, a number of the, the 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 new guys stayed in some of our short term rentals while you know we were trying to figure things out where they're going to get picked up and all that other stuff. And, and it's, okay, great, so that worked out, right? But that's not you, you typically are not going to find that necessarily right be but there's many use cases for this thing and it gives the average person an uncommon access to an industry that has felt exclusionary for a long time that's what i love because you go from your annual income being you know taking 12 months to taking one month and then with the right understanding of business systems you can cut your time like my time today like, okay, I'll say it this way. You and I will talk longer today than I've personally spent all week managing my short-term rent. <laughs> that's, that's, that's crazy. You can't beat that. Not. That's the path that I want. <laughs> yeah. Me too. I, that's, that's the path that I want. That's, that's, super, that's super sharp. So, so Jay, do you have a course or what's the process to go about for educating someone like me that I have amazing credit. I've owned multiple homes. You know, I have an unbelievable, I own multiple companies and I'm looking to restart owning homes and rentals so that I can build my equity and build, build up my portfolio to have a number of doors. What's the first step for me? To get started today, the 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 biggest thing is to do when you're ready to build a business. We the the most important thing is to decide. It's probably something you do. You don't even all really the time. do it. You do it already. You got to decide who it is that you want to serve. You could choose to serve anybody, right? You you could choose to and 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 it's literally your choice. It's not an issue of money. It's not an issue of who's going to pay me the most. It's not an issue of which one's most profitable. It's You've had a job before that you didn't like, okay? And don't build another one. <laughs> so let's make sure that we focus on building something that you actually enjoy and, and just know that, hey, th there's going to be systems and challenges no matter what. Walmart, Target, and Nordstrom all make money and they all sell shirts. Now, I don't care where you go get the shirt, okay? What matters is this who's Cut, which customer do you want to serve? Because when you go to Nordstrom, you have a certain expectation. And when you go to Walmart, let's just say that the expectation is different and they all make money. So that's the most important thing. And that's the step that most people skip. We just absolutely. But that's typically what we do. We tend to have people you know, fill out a small applications so we can get to know you. And then there's a consultation call. And we start walking you through, taking in what you're looking at, your resources, and mapping out a plan. How do we get you from A to B? 
And quite directly and honestly, the more resources you have, the sooner, the faster it goes. But it doesn't mean you have to have resources. Like this, it doesn't matter what your credit is. It, it literally now, not, 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 not to ask, not to ask like direct numbers, but sure. what is your what is your consultation cost when you're consulting someone it's or it's just a roundabout? Consultation is no cost because our program is a 12 month program. It's an interview process, if anything, of are you ready for 12 months of actual real work in the money space to because we intend to change who you are. You will not be able to be the same person that we meet today if you're going to achieve the success that we are talking about. Because when I say things like if you're used to $50,000 a year and I am directly telling you we create people who do $50,000 a month and they look like you and me and they only have a high school degree. This is really important to overstand that you can do this. And that is literally what we intend for to, to have happen. It's not by luck or by chance. We've got a system and we're making sure that you follow it as best we can. Because it's worth it in country. This is so crazy. This is so crazy because like, I'm, I'm, I'm working with Jay now in that same system, and it's so funny that I've been working with Chris in his same system. And Chris, like in the beginning of like when I was working with Chris, he said the same thing. Your mindset is going to change completely. Like, and when I worked with Chris for over a year, I started to notice how my mindset like of being a college player has turned into being a professional. And, yeah. and now it's like, when I hear that from Jay, it's like, okay, well, what did I have to do to change my mindset with Chris? And it was just lock in, zone in, yep. and, and completely dial in. But like, this is the, dip, the balance with sports and business. So it's, it's just crazy, the correlation. I'm in the middle of being taught by both of you guys. So like, I need the best of both worlds right now. It, you know, <laughs> I, love it. I love it. And, and if, if truth be told, it is athletes, artists, musicians who have an absolute advantage in business because they've learned one of the most important things. You know that failure is skill. You you know how to miss the shot and get back on the court. You know that you know, <laughs> my percentage is a little low and you know that you're going to be spending some extra hours. And but when you don't make that about you, you don't make that all. Oh, I'm horrible. No, I just got to keep working on my free throw. It's not a big deal. It's a part of the process. You fail fast and, and fail frequently. You know how to do that. Right. That's what gets me excited. So, Jay, even when you take it to that next level, like I have some, some rookie NBA guys I was working with today. Um, the number one thing that I've learned over 17 years of being in the industry of working with the 1% is that there's a reason for everything. So if I can teach you the answer to the question, every shot that you take, there's a reason why it missed to the left, to the right, short or long. There's only four ways to miss a shot, right? When you understand why your confidence, your mental mindset will never change or flurry because you're now in the system. You now become your best coach. So for me, I want my guys to become equipped so well that they become their best coach. And it makes it very hard for somebody else to come in and develop them because the system is so good. We got a question.